It's the Offix Podcast, baby. Glad you tuned in. Got your host, thank me later, and you're stupid to win. Might become an obsession as soon as you begin. Start out king of the street, then lock it iconic in. Welcome to Offland. Grab your Offix, man. On your way in the door, hit you with four grand. Get to buying and gripping, then to selling and flipping. Over to moving and shocking. I'm Scrooge McDuckin' in Offix fellow Uplanders, and welcome to another episode of the Upland Property Experts. I am your host, Too Stupid to Win, and as always, I'm joined by Thank Me Later. You're still on mute, brother, if you do not know that. So how are we doing this evening? Yeah, man, I'm doing all right. Yeah, happy to be here. Episode 142. What's, uh, our, uh, what's our Twitch handle? Um, I forget because it's been uh, the... Uh, the the underscore upx underscore podcast. Wait, oh my gosh, who who picked that? The underscore upx. Yep. Underscore podcast. Apple? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that was me. That's You're an welcome. unfortunate name. It is. All right. Well, I will say, you know, one of the one of the first things I'll say is thank you to Upex World Media who just uh, rated us. So that is much appreciated. They have over 6,000 uh, followers. Um, and so hopefully some of them join. Uh, this is the UpX podcast uh, with Too Stupid to Win and Thank Me Later. Yeah. So there you go. Thank you, uh, UpX World Media. Yes, appreciate that uh, for the raid. And we look forward to having people join us this episode. Got a lot to talk about this episode. Uh, things are starting to pick up once again in Upland. Uh, they announced uh, Rio, a date for Rio, which I was actually kind of surprised with the amount of properties still available that they were going to release Rio, but it's a limited release. We'll get into that a little bit later. Factories yeah. dropped. We got spark week going on right now and you can build new buildings in the game more and more new style of buildings are are out there in the game which is always exciting so it's just not the same set across the broad broad world yeah no I, i'm liking the the slow introduction of uh diverse buildings it does kind of make you hesitant like do i want to build now or wait for something bigger or more interesting um the new hair and beard the new hair and beard is literally because i can't wear a hat because I have massive nerve damage on the left side of my head. <laughs> <laughs> so, and the new beard is because I can't shave because it feels like the side of my face is on fire. Uh, so yeah. Um, but no, I, I'm glad that, you know, that has maybe turned into my new style. So. Yeah. Uh, I was, I was just surprised at first. I'm like, man, you got that, that heat wave going on out there and you decide to grow out the beard. I'm like, all right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Sorry. Thanks. Yeah. All right. All right. Just say thanks. Thank you, Morgies. Yes. I like it. Now, anyway, and as always, we do have the market update. Um, you want to jump right into that or you want to jump into one of the other topics first? No, we can do, uh, I think market update's good. Outstanding. All right. So this week, is just like all the other weeks. A lot of red, not looking fun. Um, surprisingly, you had some big jumps, twenty uh, percent jumps in your U.S. dollar floor, pl floor prices. But overall, your UPEX and your U.S. dollar are down for the week. Um, and yeah, I have, I, I would say, I mean, we're still seeing a little hesitation in the market. I think, you know, with Rio pending, people are probably still liquidating a bit. Um, so yeah, it's not unsurprising, I guess. Yeah, that's true. Um, I did run these numbers before the Rio announcement was announced today, but still, there's st still a lot of uncertainty, a lot of good deals to have. Um, as we'll see here in a minute, when we look at the markup percentages, Manhattan's uh, UPEX floor price dropped, but it's UPEX floor markup percentage shot up through the roof. So interesting. I, I really like like what that actually says about the underlying market. It's pretty cool. Yeah. And then uh, 
So this is the OPEX markup, and I put the absolutely wrong slide <laughs> in there. <laughs> I doubled up the slide. Oh, uh, no. Why? That, that's a fail. fail. That is an absolute fail. Um, All right. So we'll just keep on. We'll just breathe by that, eh? Yeah. Hold on. OPEX. Did I download? Oh, there it is. We'll open it up nice, big. I'll move it over like that. And I'll... Oh. I'll stop sharing for a second. And then I'll share the screen. Goodness gracious. Yeah, I know a process. And it's tiny. There it is. All right. But, yeah. So last week, the... OPEX floor for the Manhattan cheapest Manhattan property was 272%. This week it shot up over 32% to 361%. So I find it interesting that your OPEX floor drops and you end up raising your markup percentage on your floor. Well, I think what happens is one, you know, after you hit like a certain high, um, all those people that are holding these small properties are waiting to see how much they can profit from, right? Like, right. and so you'll have the middle of the road people, like as it starts to get to a threshold, they'll start to sell out. But then as soon as it starts to drop, all of those middle people, like usually take off market. And then so the people at the bottom who are like, holy cow, this might be my last chance to get a, a 3X. I'm going to sell my cheap property for 3X now to make sure that I can at least get that. So I think that you'll see some of that happen when the market starts to come down that uh, your floor, like in this scenario, the people who have uh, smaller properties might try and liquidate to take advantage of it. So, yeah, I think you're pretty, pretty spot on with that analysis. Um, Fresno. So now for, I'm going to be interested in like the secondary market of um, Fresno, uh, any of the places with large up square um, with the announcement of the factories that is going to be i think like that's yeah. going to play a huge thing in in markup and <laughs> and you can see it already hit um 62.58% went shot up from 163% to 265% just for the floor and so yeah and i know their large properties aren't the floor right now oh no they definitely wouldn't be but I, that that was my thoughts fresno um I Kansas still, City. Yeah, um, doesn't Kansas City have probably big open spaces still to mint? Yes. Yes, they do. But it's in the uh, middle of nowhere, so shipping is going to be a pain. But Yeah, need a lot of spark to travel across country or get it to the <laughs> airport and get it on some freighter jets. Right. All right. So what are we going to next? Yeah. So I'll stop sharing there. And back to the stream. All right. So... The U.S. dollar floor markup uh, on the bottom end, I like watching this one. Uh, last week, we were pretty low, and, and you're starting to see an increase in the U.S. dollar floor markup. Uh, interesting, New Orleans shot up over 15% from uh, 65% to 73%. And, and when I'm talking, it, some people have said, hey, your math is wrong because 73% to 65% is 8%, but it's the change. And I do got to adjust these colors because these colors that are in green, really we want to see in red if we're looking for the deals. But if we're, uh, which way should I go with this? Because if you're looking for... If you're looking for the deals, you want to see these numbers in red because it means it's dropping. But if you're looking to sell or you're looking to increase your value, you want to see these numbers in green. So it just really depends on on the way you want to look at it, I guess. Yeah, I mean, to me, this is sad, right? This is like not where you want, I, I think, anything to be. I, I would be okay at like maybe 80% because I think like that will be probably pretty standard. But maybe that maybe that is the game. Maybe that is the long term play of like having to buy in these secondary markets and then sell cheap for cash um, to bring new players in at a lower price point. Because I mean, the players that are that are lapping this up are getting higher percents. Get think of this: if you buy these properties now, you will be earning a higher base percent based on what you pay even from the first people to ever mint properties, right? Like that's insane. 
like that there are deals today that would get you theoretically a better rate per cost than anything that's ever been sold. Well, I mean, I guess like some of the like museums and three X yeah, stuff, but like not, not any collections standard. Yeah. Any standard property like that's so insane. Um, and yeah, I would say we want, we want it to be green because in, I like the way I think you have it correct. Like, okay. But yeah, I would probably just do it like the actual percent change, not the percent change, if you know what I'm saying. Yep, I got you. Yeah, that would I'll, make it. I'll make that adjustment because- But no, I, this is super cool. And again, I think I'm surprised, like that seems like 60%. Yeah. So like 100,000 UPEX property would be 60 bucks. Right. <sighs> That's crazy. That's crazy yeah. to me. Yeah, absolutely. And- my, I like the percent of change overall, but yeah, to be less confusing, I can definitely change that to just the percent change overall. Not a problem. Mixflix concerned about your, your LA numbers. Mm. We're 59 to 56 with 0% change. Oh, Seems yep. suspect. Yep. Backwards. Yep. Definitely suspect. I don't have a, a quality assurance program that peer checks my uh, <laughs> slides while I put them together. So we need uh, to get on that. I need to get you a secretary. Yeah. Or, or uh, somebody that just does these tasks for me each week and then I can double check them. Um, now, here's a 12 week change. So going back to April 28th, looking at how the overall performance of the market is doing. Um, oh, thanks, Dizzy. <laughs> nice. thanks dude. and i love when my own podcast that i created slams me that's even better <laughs> um and that's my fault for giving them this access that is your fault. <laughs> but yeah going back three weeks we zoom out look at the big picture as you can see rutherford's still defying the odds with its uh tight-knit group of people continuing to rise that place there with its um, general shenanigans, is that, I think that's what you meant to say. Yeah, sure. <laughs> still not at its all-time high, but definitely um, still higher than everybody else. Yeah, no, for sure. I also think, I mean, I, I you know, the other thing we could maybe put on perspective here is I'm curious what uh, the crypto market was 12 weeks ago from today, right? Ooh. Like, because, you know, we see it. Oh, Disney says it's higher. It was higher 12 weeks. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, like, I'm curious, like, did Upland outperform the market? So, like, are the markets down 60% and Upland's down 2 to 20? It, it seemed like they were uh, trailing the market, both the crypto market and the regular stock market. Okay. Oh, it's up about 20%. Yeah, it, the last couple of weeks, it's jumped. Well, that's good. We like that. Yeah, cheap entry points. Um, Detroit, Queen, Chicago, LA, Cleveland. Um, even the US dollar floor is down. Everything's under Ooh, five bucks. Under the, five dollar. Under five dollars. Five dollar foot long. Come get it, boys. <laughs> there you go. Um, but other than that, that's your entry floors. Nothing drastic. I don't see big changes over over the last week. Um, no, that's not surprising. Like there really shouldn't be. These should end up stabilizing more or less, um, and then slowly start to see an appreciation. Like that's when you'll know, like the the economy's kind of gotten to that maturity point of kind of stabling out, and then a steady growth. Um, and I don't see yeah. these five cities dropping. I mean, it can't the, really drop that much more, right? Like, you can't get much cheaper than thirty-two hundred. Yeah, you're you're going to see your liquidations in the other cities, or you'll see the bigger property liquidations in these cities. But the mm. the entry floor price in these, I, I don't see those as the liquidation points for um for the release of Rio. Yeah. Sold out. Los Angeles, 67%. Nashville, 71 Queens, 77 Las Vegas, 78 Kansas City, 78 Las Vegas is going to pass Kansas City probably by next week. Detroit, 80 And Chicago still at 98 
Very cool. Oh. Um, overall properties. Yes. So since last week, 10,790 properties have been sold, have been minted. It's okay. So you had the drop. Detroit had the biggest amount of sales with 4,476 over the past week. Um, and, and that's why I'm surprised, you know, only that we're seeing real coming up next week. Just because, but it's a limited release. We'll talk about that. They're only going to add 50,000 properties to the market. So it's not a complete flood of properties. So I get that. We'll, we'll break that how down. Many were, how section. many were released with Vegas? 77,000. Okay. So slightly smaller than Vegas. Right. Okay. Right. So, um, yeah, Queens. Queens had 2,793 properties sold the last week. Los Angeles, only 1,677. And these are newly minted. I'm not talking about the secondary sales. So you do have yeah. the competition from the below mint prices where people are purchasing those during the week also. So, I mean, I'm, I'm curious. Like, I wonder if they want like a certain run runway based on their current burn rate. So like that's almost, you know, 49 weeks you know, it would take right if it's ten thousand. Yeah, if it's ten thousand a week. Then you're about you know forty nine weeks to to sell out at the current rate, right? So I'm curious if they have a number in mind that they're like based on this trajectory, we need to do X, right? We need to have X amount of available uh, properties to sustain this. Yeah, and the interesting part too is if you look just a uh, just a few months ago we were, were if you reference dap radar we were approaching almost 300,000 users that were monthly interacting with their eos wallet but now we're under 210,000 that are doing that on the 30 day average so we're, you're close to dropping uh, 33% of your active user base uh, over the last few months also yeah but wasn't that largely due to them really clamping down on secondary accounts and multi-accounters that's what i my understanding was like a lot of those got jailed and auto banned um yeah like weeded the the numbers pretty heavily which which helps and i'm glad they've been aggressive with that so yeah but, all right and all it takes is one big uh one big um one big push of new players coming in and start buying, you know, or a couple big players coming in and start buying stuff up to, to really change these numbers. So um, I'm still working on getting the secondary sales numbers um, in my spare time. I keep messing with stuff to figure that out. So hopefully I'll have that for you guys shortly so we can compare, you know, what, what, which you're seeing more new mints or you're seeing secondary sales. Also, if you're interested in putting together weekly slides like the ones featured here and would like to get paid in USD or UPEX, message, thank me later, or too stupid. Yes. And we'll, we'll fund, we'll fund you, or, I mean, we'll go, we can go to Fiverr, but if yeah. somebody's looking for a little bit of extra money. Keep it in the community. Keep it so in the community. So that way, too stupid can afford better internet. Or is it me? Sometimes it's me. No, it's it's me. It's still me. I was on the phone with uh, AT&T once again. Fiber's still not my way. And they still just suck because I'm at the end of the line of the old U-verse line. So it just depends on what everybody Dude, else is come doing. Come to Texas. Let's get over with. Get out of Cleveland. Come to Texas. Bro, like you guys are super hot right now. Like ridiculous. Ridiculous. Like Texas is hot, but you guys are hot, hot right now. Oh, yeah. No, we're hot. Yeah. We're almost we're almost as hot as what this Miles B chain. <laughs> Boing. Yeah, Look, get that a little closer to that camera. Look at that Ooh. bad boy. And Ooh, hold on. you know you could have probably got one up too close oh, now. Too close. Too close. To one. There it is. Yeah. Miles B chain. Yep, Ortiz got one oh nine. So yeah, you could have probably got one cheaper in game. No, no, no. This was cheaper than the Blog Explorer. The Blog Explorer is crazy expensive. Wow. All right. Secondary or original mint? Oh, this is original mint. One of one. <laughs> one of one. All right. So we got Rio de Janeiro just announced. 
today. And are you excited for Rio? Sure. I think the answer you're looking for is yes, Rio, our first international. Is it is it just me or? Oh, wait, what for the listeners? No, it's not for the listeners. This is just mine. This is not for <laughs> listeners. My Miles B chain is for me. Thank you, though, Dr. Nobody. Um, so is it just me or like, does it not like I, I kind of was expecting more from the first international upland city? Like, like can you say that? Like, how so? I don't know. Like, I was expecting like I, just some grand thing, right? Like, I mean, you picture like Tokyo or Sydney or London with all these monuments. I mean, yes, you have Christ the Redeemer, which I'm sure is not going to be part of anything for sale anytime soon. Um, but like, I don't really feel, I know that there's a large Brazilian population um, that is very excited. So that's cool. Um, but I don't know, man. I just thought it would feel different. Cause I'm not like, I'm not even probably going to fly down there, honestly. Really? You're, so the guy that owns the Genesis property that got in on getting a Genesis car and tried to buy the Genesis winning car and wants everything firsties, number one properties and everything is not going to go to the first international city to buy properties and partake in the first international city release. No, <laughs> probably not. <laughs> I mean, after that, I know it doesn't make much, you know, it's that big of a deal um, after it's all said and done. But it does make sense because of the community that Upland has in Brazil that they would put Rio up there. Um, I know Tokyo or you know, the cities that you mentioned would be, you know, more attractive per se, but... Yeah, the, this is playing to the next largest user base of Upland. I, I, for those who say, I really don't plan on flying to Rio. That doesn't mean to say I won't own properties in Rio. 100% I'm going to own properties in Rio. Um, I'll probably just buy them secondary market. I'll have a, a buyer or just have like if there's specific kinds of properties I'm looking for. But no, I probably won't go down there. Um, I haven't. But to be fair, I don't participate in a lot of the city releases anymore um i'm i don't want to say like i'm over it but like i like to let other people just enjoy that that's just not part of the game that is for me anymore is it because the city releases go so smooth now and you and you don't get frustrated and throw things that right? it's just it's not, not as it's fun for you fun. it's it's too smooth it's too easy you can like click things and buy it and you can you know they actually have sends come up it's it's ridiculous um no i for me like my game strategy is very different now um it's all about community and it's all about um you know creating those those neighborhoods and, and creating value um and so any projects that i think add true value you're not going to get on a random um kind of uh, scavenger hunt hoping to to land a ur or rare uh, collection. Not that there's anything wrong with that, because I think it's a really fun part of the game. And I think a lot of people are drawn to it. And it is super, super fun. Um, for me, it's just like, that's not how I want to, that's not how I buy properties anymore, because I just have a different gaming strategy. That's all. Yeah. And if you're paying attention, and you're a newer player, that's a, a new city release is a great way to make money, though, you can go in there, you know, you can buy one, sell one. You, you mint a property, you keep it. You mint another property, you post it up for 25, 30%. And somebody's going to get it because there's people like Thank Me Later that don't have somebody exclusively buying for them, but want the property, but don't want to travel. So you can turn, you know, uh, you know, 10, 20, 30,000 UPEX into, you know, 100,000 UPEX easily. Oh, yeah. I think like that's, that's such good advice too. Like, uh, the best advice, if you're trying to flip, don't be greedy. That's your number one thing. Don't be greedy. Get that 30%, go to the next one. Get that 30%, go to the next one. Like, just do that small markup that you're getting profit every single time. And you should be able to bankroll, especially if you're staying under floor, uh, because everyone else is going to be trying selling it 2 to 3x. 
Like give yourself, you know, that niche of just being the quick flipper. Boom, boom, boom. Like, I think that's like, again, if I think that would be a great strategy. Yeah. So the details there, you know, important dates, times, mm -hmm. information about it. Um, Terminal sale registration opens up July 22nd at 4 a.m. Pacific time, 7 a.m. Eastern and 8 a.m. Brazilian time. Oh, good. I'm, I thought I missed it. I was kind of sad. Nope. I do want one of the terminals. Still got time. Uh, the real terminal sale begins on uh, Saturday, July 23rd at 5 a.m. Pacific time, 8 a.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Brazilian. And so you get your... You get your terminals all set. Then Monday, July 25th, they're going to do a stress test at 9 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Brazilian. And then on Tuesday, the 26th, they will release Rio at 5 a.m. Pacific, which is a usual unusual time for them, you know, which is 9 a.m. Brazilian, 8 a.m. Eastern. Usually they're working at uh, 8 a.m. Pacific time for city releases. So I I'm intrigued why they made it earlier in the day. What do you mean? This is this is exactly how you do this. If your city gets released, when it releases, it should be 9 a.m. your time. Whatever city it is, I think every single city should have their city released at 9 a.m. their time. Like, there you go. Like, that's the standard. So when they open up Tokyo, it'll be 9 a.m. Tokyo time. And I'm I'm good with it. It's just interesting that they choose to do it now. So well, I, like I think the rest were just US, right? So US yeah. doesn't care. PST, EST, CST. You know, we had to use initials because most of America can't spell. So, you know, what do you want? Hmm. <laughs> oh, so um, it's a partial release. As I said earlier, they're going to release about 50,000 properties. And it said it's going to be much of the eastern coast. So at least, you know, the target area. Dr. Nobody wants to know what a reasonable markup. If, if you snagged one of these terminals, these are international. If you get, it depends. Wait, so is this the Rio sale? Oh, is it for the terminals in Rio or the terminals in SF? Uh, the terminals in Rio. Oh, uh, yeah. Because like the ones in FS, SF are probably 5X easy. Rio two to three X is probably what I would do on terminals. Um, if I was just trying to flip it really quick. So okay. I think that's what I did with my Queens. I think I, I got the Queens uh, bus terminal and flipped it for like three X. You see like cakes on board with me. I like cake. I mean, there's not that much time difference between, I guess, what is it? Three hours, four hours. I mean, usually it's a one o'clock release Eastern time or 11 o'clock Eastern time release. Yeah, like, come on, 9, 10, 11, 12, like, <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. When a city in Australia is launched, there's going to be some very happy Australians that always get upset that uh, the releases are in the middle of the night for them. But, I mean, that's perfect. Like, that's how it should be, too. Right? Absolutely. Like, they should get it, you know, at a good time for them. Um, the collections vanilla mode one week uh, one week release after after the city launch they'll announce the collections for what's out there. Um, FSA is going. They're liking this model, eh? Because now yeah. they, they've consistently done this a couple times. I think what they see is that it gives. Um, I think what they were trying to figure out is what's the time between vanilla mode and collections that gives people enough time to speculate on the market, and then once that speculation starts to die down. Uh, rejuvenate the interest by releasing collections and causing, you know, that, that secondary wave, right? So I, I think it's a really smart uh, release. The vanilla, uh, stay in vanilla for a week, launch the collections. I, I think that they've kind of nailed that. Yeah. And they they figured, you know, they tinkered with it for a while and they figured out what works. And there's it, it's been a long time since we had a city release with the collections announced ahead of time. And I, I think that's well past us too. So Yeah. Yeah, which is fine, honestly. Absolutely. It, it was just too uh too chaotic and very hard to mint anything. Um FSA twenty seven about twenty seven percent 
and it's going to be a treasure hunting tier four. Now, how do you, I, I mean, I know you're not a big treasure hunter. You barely treasure hunt at all, but how do you fe feel the most, uh, the first international city is going to be a treasure hunting tier four city and not a tier one or tier two? Um, I mean, I think it's fair. It's weird because with a tier four, I would have thought there'd be more FSA. Yeah. Like that seems a bit off to me um based on the the hunting criteria and stuff I, I just go i would have thought rio would have been at least 40 percent fsa tier four I, I get it um i i suppose but you do, you do have the new tier five too which is you know your your 50 percent fsa so but yeah for only 27 percent, I, I would think you you would push closer 35 and maybe even 40 percent, like you're saying yeah well because i thought isn't isn't one of them like 75 percent, or is it cap out at 50 now mm, not sure because i feel like fresno was like 75 percent fsa wasn't it can't remember that one <laughs> <laughs> that was a while ago i do i remember minting like two I, I know i had a buyer i had a couple of buyers and like i got a couple people to you know that's right. Cause that was like the first time you had that scenario. Cause like FSA was introduced like right at that time. Yeah. Yeah. So it was like the first time juggling, like, Hey, are you FSA? Like, how do we do this? Yeah. It's, yeah. Well, this is cool. All right. Rio and then, collections. And Whoa, nice you need to put like a label on here, speculative or some shit. Like it's you not can't. collections. So once again, I need a peer check because this is Rio landmarks. Oh, are these confirmed landmarks? Yeah. They oh. said that, which I like. And I was rushing to put this together and I went from collections to landmarks. And But these are landmarks in Rio. They already told you they're going to be locked, which is nice because now you don't have to speculate. Is it a landmark or is it not a landmark? So you don't have to sit there and hover and or, or waste your sense trying to get to one of these places because you're not sure that it's going to be a landmark or not. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Searching for these is going to be a pain, eh? Yeah. Well, I don't know how to get these symbols on my keyboard. What do you, what's going on here? Switch it to Portuguese. Oh, it's Portuguese board. That's what I got to do. Yes. I'm going to call well, my boy, uh, Musinda. Be like, bro, I need you to translate this for me. Why? You're going to dog mix like that. No, Musinda, the player of the year. He's from Brazil. And Mix Plick, who's been riding and dying with us since day one, you're, you're just not going to ask him to hook you up? What? I wouldn't, you know, that's, dinosaurs yeah. can't translate. That's science. <laughs> Everyone knows that. <laughs> it's just science. Oh, look. Mix, I can bring you on right now if you have a low background going on. Mix, you want to jump in here? School us on some Espanol. Do they? It's not. It's not Espanol. They don't speak it's Spanish, Portuguese. Portuguese. Yes. All right. There we go. We're welcome. Wait. To mix so does mix, mix? Do you speak Portuguese? He's from Brazil. Yeah, I do. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Okay, so I'm I'm in charge of uh, pronouncing all of these. <laughs> can Can Tibo read this for the people on the podcast? No, so there's a whole list of collections. I am not going to try and read any of these. Tell us a little bit. Tell us a little bit about Rio, since you're, you know, you're in São Paulo, but you know Brazil's your native country. G give us a little rundown. I will not be very good at that because <laughs> I, I really don't know. I really don't don't know Rio that much. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So there you go. So I'm not some like. Like he might not speak Portuguese, and he doesn't even know anything about Rio. Come on! Oh no, I know the the the, the trivial stuff like Copacabana and uh, I don't know Lebron so, and. So and now, obviously, not much. Christ the Redeemer is glaringly missing from this. However, like I think in most of the other cities, like the the huge landmarks, Golden Gate Bridge, Statue of Liberty, have been kind of excluded. Do you think that's obviously it's intentional, right? Like, so because Christ the Redeemer, I mean, it's in all of their ads. It's, I mean, that's the reason that's what everybody knows in Rio, right? I think so, yeah. So, what do you think is going on with those? 
You, you mean me? Like with the with the Christ the Redeemer and his uh, big landmarks? Yeah. I I I one one thing I think is that they are not like in the middle of the city, right? They are like isolated, like Golden Gate's kind of outside of the map of uh, San Francisco. Uh, Christ the Redeemer is also lot, not in the middle of the streets, right? It's in a isolated yeah, location. It could be that. They also have yeah. the they also have the 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 cable cars there in in Rio. Yeah, no, the cable cars that'll be super interesting. Yeah, sure. that also yeah, I, that I also would love didn't to see make... them put something in there with that. That'd yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, can you prove to thank me later that you can speak Portuguese and run through these landmarks for us? Uh, sure. Let me see them. Okay. Uh, Confeitaria Colombo. Rua Gonçalves Dias, 32, Centro. Hold on, hold on. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to read it, and then you read it, okay? Right. Copacabana Palace, the Bedlam Hotel, Rio de Janeiro, Ava Atlantic, 1702, Copacabana. Yeah, yeah Ave is uh, Avenida, Avenue. Okay, so now you go. Now you read it correctly. Okay. Uh, Copacabana Palace... A Belmond Hotel, uh, Rio de Janeiro, Avenida Atlântica, 1702, Copacabana. It's always pretty close. All right, let's try that one. <laughs> Fundical Biblioteca Nacional, Avenue Rio Branco, 219 Centro. Uh, Fundação Biblioteca Nacional, Avenida Rio Branco, 219 Centro. Oh, dude, but I nailed Biblioteca, which I'm going to guess is library. <laughs> Library, what up? Why does everybody yes. know the Spanish word for library? Like, that's just universal. Like, I don't understand. <laughs> like, it's the weirdest thing. All right. Uh, let's see. Gunabara Palace. R. P. Hero Machad, South North, Laryngitis. Uh, Guanabara Palace, Rua Pinheiro Machado, sem número. Laranjeiras. Oh, so I actually was not as far off as you wanted that to be. Try, try the third from the bottom. Third from the bottom. Sambandrom Marquis de Suspicious R. Marquez de S Spatula Santo Cristo. <laughs> that one's funny because they didn't translate it. A Sambadrom should be Sambodromo. Sambodromo Marquês de Sapucaí, Rua Marquês de Sapucaí, Santo Cristo. That's actually a cool landmark because that's that's the avenue where they do the parades, the the the, the carnival. Wow, Nick, yeah. I, I kind of fell in love with you a little bit. That Portuguese <laughs> is a sexy language, eh? Yeah, well, that's the, that's where it was <laughs> raised. Sounds like trucker code. That's right, because that's how I was raised. That's how I was raised. Trucker code. Believe it. That's awesome. You want to do any more there? Thank me later. <laughs> no, I think like I think people we're, get the we're point. Done. Yes. <laughs> so are you mix are you excited for rio being the first international city uh I, i'm with thank me later like i, I expected uh, like tokyo or uh, paris or london i'm a, a bit surprised it's rio i i know there's a lot of people here in brazil that uh are excited about it and i of course i'm excited about it but it wasn't it was i was surprised okay now, are you going to fly down and partake, or are you just going to sit this out? I think I'll, I'll, I'll fly down, yeah. Nice. I will. I'm actually here in Sao Paulo right now, so uh, I don't know. I have time. I'm on vacation. Oh, there you go. Well, enjoy your time. Enjoy your vacation. Uh, thanks for jumping on with us uh, impromptu okay. like that. Anytime. Yeah. yeah. Th thanks Thank for... you. I'll put you backstage. All right. All right. Thank you, Mixplex. Very cool. All right. And how do you get there? So if you need to know how to get there, you can only get there from um what is this right? did, you, did you just like stroke out? This I, I did just stroke anything. out because it's it's not right, which is messed up because I took it right from Rio <laughs> de Janeiro. I took it right for I didn't once again didn't peer check and Jeez but beats. but I took it straight. Nope, I didn't take it straight. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, I, I stroked I out. You say that a lot, especially yeah. after a couple of drinks, eh? 
Yeah. No, I only had one whiskey tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I had one whiskey tonight. It's been one of those weeks. Um, but you can either get there. You can get there from LAX, San Francisco, um, Chicago, or New York. Um, Wait, they have they have terminals in all those places already? Yeah, when they have internet. Those? They when went on those? sale a while ago. We talked about it on the show. All of those cities? Yeah. Man. Yeah, I didn't we talk- any of them? Uh, Genesis week. Dang. Yeah. All right. I you that. registered for them. Yeah. I didn't realize it was all this. I guess that makes sense. Yeah. Probably one per city. Yeah. Um, There was a new one my wife grabbed. It was uh, Irishman or something. I have to look at the label. It was actually pretty good. So I'm going to have a second one after the podcast because it's been that kind of week. Um. And I'm glad you came back this week after uh, the uh, name shaming that Thank Me Later did last week. <laughs> what? Uh, you're so nasty. Oh, you're so nasty. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I mean. So either way, they have 10 airport terminals. Yeah, we lost. Uh, <laughs> we lost some viewers. Anyway, 10 airport <laughs> terminals that are being, uh, drop being clock. sold. Pull it back up. <laughs> um. Thanks, Dr. Nobody. Um, The airport terminals are for sale for $1,455 U.S. dollars. And as you said, you're thinking it's going to be an easy 3Xer on that. Uh, I would say 3,000. If they're 1,500, probably 3,000, 4,000. Like, I don't see them hitting 45, honestly, but. Okay. Yeah, 3X might be a tough, tough one on that. Yep. And I did have the proper graphic and I just grabbed the wrong one while hurrying up to make the slides. So yes, please message us if you'd like to make slides for the show. (laughs) So new factories, well, not new factories, factories altogether have been announced. Um, And there was a flurry of people setting up factories, people that weren't even in any of the beta business for the decor they're just started throwing factories up and on the spark exchanges they were throwing factories up people are building factories like it's going out of style and like people it's so you can't you can't reason with these people either like i saw somebody put a factory at in a property that was like maybe twice as big as the factory so the the functional space would have been maybe the size the the same footprint as the factory and we're like hey you know, looking to rent some spark for this or whatever. And I'm like, holy cow, like, no, no, do not waste your money on this. Like, there's so many reasons that you should not be doing this. Like, this is not the correct place for a factory. Like, you are going to pay way too much spark for this that you're not going to have utility for anytime soon. You're way better off buying a residential unit and waiting to have a bigger lot for your thing. Like, and then you would think that you were like telling them that like, their God didn't exist. Like that's how personal people take it. They're like, you, you're just trying to monopolize it. You're building a factory. Aren't you? See, you just don't want other people to have factories. And I'm like, Whoa, calm down. I've been in the beta program for almost two years now. Like, yeah, I am building a factory. I'm building one factory in one location. I'm not building a hundred. I'm building one because that's what's needed for the beta program. Like calm down there, Susan. And yeah, while you're building a factory in Manhattan, when you have cheaper properties, you have bigger area outside of Manhattan, I I don't get it. No, I mean, I think you'll need, I mean, if you have a large plot of land in, in Manhattan, I wouldn't, I mean, I, I don't know. I wouldn't be opposed to having a factory in Manhattan because then it's easier, you know, for storage and, and actually building save you on the shipping but yeah i would tend to agree it's probably going to function much like real life where again your larger plots of land um are going to be outside the city so but i mean i i do something you know maybe the bronx where you have less than a hundred percent you know you have under mint properties going on something like that you know one of the one of the cheaper surrounding surrounding boroughs you can still it's not that far to transport it in on a semi once they come into the games or anything like that no pretty much like real life right like there's no there's no manufacturing plants in the middle of manhattan for a reason 
Yeah. Yeah. And I, I was just surprised, you know, as you were saying, yes. the, the amount of, uh, the amount of people building factories on such small properties. But what I've also seen is I had to change my offers on properties because all of a sudden I got flooded with a bunch of offers for large up square properties. And that was something we used to talk about all the time. And we always stressed was, you know, there was always the race of who had the largest amount of property in the game. And it was for a reason. This is the reasons we're talking about. Um, and yeah, did you get a lot of offers for your larger up square properties or did you already have your markup set high enough uh, that you weren't getting low ball offers? Yeah, my my markup's significant on those, so. Yeah. <laughs> yes, makes sense. I mean, that answers viable. the question. You were like, yeah, so anyway. Yeah, now, people that, now what about the people how much spark should you have before you even think of building a factory? I, I don't know. I, I think 15 to 20 would be the number that I would be like, if I was going to be in manufacturing, I'd want probably at least 20 spark. I reckon. Yeah. So if you have one, two or three sparks, should you be building a factory? No. In my, my personal opinion? No, no. I think that's a terrible waste of, of resources. And oh, 10 I like spark, it. I like cake says 10 spark minimum. 10 spark would be the absolute minimum. And it depends. Like maybe if you're running just like a small factory um, or like a small distribution plant. Cause here's the other thing, people. Um, and they did, they, I feel bad because there's going to be a lot of disappointed people once they realize like you can run a manufacturing plant out of a home. Like you actually do not need a factory to build. Um, and, and I don't know that this has been very public, but like, it's just more efficient to build in a factory. But if you have just a little home on a plot of land, you'll technically be able to build and produce out of that home. It'll just have a lot more restrictions, just like, you know, running a business out of your home versus a factory is. So I think that there's going to be a lot of disappointed people when they realize that, that they could have been just investing in building homes um, on their properties that would actually add value in a lot of different ways, as opposed to this very specific building. Um, I actually think it's a mistake to have it open to the general public um, because I think it is going to set the wrong expectation and they haven't. So that's just my opinion though. Yeah. And, and you can look at it from one side of, well, why do only the beta business people get the factory? And it's because, hey, they're the beta business people. They're doing the uh, they're doing the decor. They want a manufacturing plant, you know, to help them do that, because I, I think you're going to have a lot of factories across the upland metaverse that are going to be sitting idle. And then you're going to have people trying to sell it. So it could be a good opportunity to pick up a factory at a discount cost you cheaper than what it would have cost you in spark or spark hours to rent sooner or later, because people are going to realize that they don't have enough spark. They're not going to spend the 450 to 600 or $700 to get a full spark every month, you know, or get multiple spark a month. If it's available, it's manufacturing is not going to be for everybody. Um, and it's going to be expensive. It's going to be expensive to start up. It's going to be expensive to maintain um, and be competitive because uh, you also have to either a source your designer to create your um, create your product to certain specs that will be approved to manufacture. And then you got to have the spark to manufacture it at a constant rate. And then you have to be able to transport it and your vehicles take spark to transport and you have to have your showroom. Up That's and so they're, they're, Is that true? Which thing's unconfirmed? Spark to run your cars? Is that true? Yeah, that's true. You just made that up. Okay. No, I didn't. We've had this discussion before about this. You think cars are going to cost spark to run? I guess. I mean, it makes sense, I guess. But yeah, I mean, the reality yeah. is the factories, the factories are more efficient, you know, creation areas. 
but they're not residential. Where re residential can technically be commercial, just at a lower speed, um, from from what's been shared with us. So again, I obviously it's not nothing's launched, so it could change. But the reality is, like, that's you. Yeah, I just feel bad for people. That, yeah. Yeah. It, oh yeah, no, it's going to be a tremendous amount of work. Like, if you like, even just look at the block explorer secondhand shops and the nflpa like that's a ton of work and they're not manufacturing like getting the designers it's like wrangling cats and like they're very specific requirements like three levels of detail so like if you look at like the cars how they have like the four and eight k range down to the little micro machine next to the building next to the one that's in the actual uh unity app like you have to have all those for all your items you have to go through a whole vetting process like a lot of work and then you're gonna have to manufacture transport yeah, like too stupid said yeah should i demolish my factory and build another apartment yes almost certainly yeah so factory owners so that's interesting so this is for Dizzy saying factory owners may also wish to leverage their existing factories to trade with other uplanders who are eager to start production immediately rather than wait for a factory to be built. Yeah. And, and I don't that's know if that fundamentally from... changes because especially if you're building it on a tiny ass lot, like, I mean, you could build 10 factories despite me. I, I just don't like, uh, maybe there is a market then for that. But like if you're building it on a lot that is less than, say, a thousand up square, like you're probably doing it wrong. Like I'm just going to throw that out there. I think like that would be my minimum to build a factory would be a thousand up square. Yeah. So. yeah. And you also don't have I, I should have did the spark. Um, I should have did an update on Spark, but since it was Spark Week, I thought it would be pointless to do an update on Spark and wait till after the Spark Week. But NFT Artifact is you don't, an amazing artist, by the way. Shout out to NFT Artifact. Architect. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't think right now you don't have enough players with the appropriate amount of Spark for all the factories that are going to be made. No, no. I think, you know, 80% eh, of the factories that are being made right now should not be being made. Like, that's just full stop. Like, we're going to be in beta. The beta is going to last for, like, weeks. And so, like, you probably want to figure out the mechanics of it all first, see how it works. The first, like, even the, uh, the beta testers were told – they will only be able to use one designated factory during the beta test. So even if we build multiple, we'll only have one functioning um, factory during uh, the beta test. So, um, oh, apparently Spark to run cars is correct. Okay, good. Um, yeah, th thing is groups like UCC will have Spark Army, right? Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know. Like, I, I don't. I wouldn't be building a bunch of factories right now. Because but. I would like to see, you know, as a, a, the ability to increase your manufacturing by having people stake their spark in your factory to help manufacture and you give them a call, you give them price like they're your workers. Them staking spark is like working in your factory. That would be nice. So you could have larger resources of spark to help manufacture. Yeah, I think that'll come. Um, I, I think they'll, they'll need to do something like that to make it a even more even playing ground. Um, yeah. But yeah. But initially, right now, it, it's the, the people that are going to be using it are the beta decor shops. And we'll, we'll see how that all rolls out. And there's going to be plenty of other opportunities. You know, semis are going to come. You're going to want to get semis. You want to get the cargo vans. You, you can do, there's going to be so many different styles of businesses going on, you know, in Upland that's just not manufacturing, you know. And some people might 
just want a row show rooms and you can buy stuff from different manufacturers. There's so many possibilities out there. You know, it, it's just not focused. You don't have to be the, the streamline end all be all everything to it. You know, I think that's a really good call out, right. Of like, there's going to be multiple opportunities to create value and earn yourself, you know, potential revenue streams, right? You do not. I, I think that's probably. And honestly, I, I need to tell myself that <laughs> like you don't have to own the process start to finish. Like you don't have to be the artist and the manufacturer and the retailer and the marketer. Right. You can get a team. You're going to need a team of people to do it right. You're going to need a team of artists that are dedicated, that understand the protocols, that have the submission process down. Um, so that way your prints get approved. You're going to want a player who has a lot of access to spark or funds for manufacturing. Um, so that way you have that smooth or then you're going to want a high profile uh, meta venture um, or, you know, marketing campaign to make sure that the word of your product gets out. So, I mean, it's going to take a team to the, the most successful of these will definitely be requiring a team. Yes. Yeah. And you got to have good organizational skills, good communication skills, because if you want to run that empire, you, you're going to have to be working with each other and uh, helping develop these relationships to get it done to be a top producer. Uh, so how big? I, I would say uh, a thousand is my thing. What do you think? What's your what's your minimum number that you'd go to factory at? <laughs> I mean, it's a small factory, so I don't know how large they're going to do large factories. And you don't have properties that are greater than 10,000 up square. Um, well, so I, I don't could, think they released anything higher than 4,000 that's in like non landmark. Is, is 4,000 sure. on the fresh mint? 5,000? Okay. 5, I, I think 000. I got a couple over 4,000. Oh, yeah, I don't know if there's any 5,000. Okay. Yeah. So now this yeah. this is an interesting comment from Jimmy James. I think you tried to put up. I overread it. Yeah, uh, I <laughs> you think clicked off of it. A, yeah, I know. I uh, I think that th this is an interesting point from Jimmy James on it's a way for Upland to sell off big properties that are not minted. Um, I, I honestly that to me that's the conspiracy theory side. Like if you if you want to put on your tinfoil hat. Like, sure, oh, this is a conspiracy to sell off bigger properties now. Um, it, it was literally to support the decor shop, which is coming, you know, the beta is is launching. I think that there was probably extra code to limit it to only be able to be built by, you know, the six people that are in the beta. And they're like, eh, we'll just open it up, let people build it, whatever. Um, but I, I don't think it was like a cognizant, like, well, we should release this with little to no information so people buy massive uh, properties uh, to build these manufacturing plants on. Because the people who are already thinking about this have large properties. <laughs> like Right. Like, and, and here's here's a little insight. So beta business has been going on for about a year and a half right now-ish. Yeah, about a year and a half for the probably more than that, shops. Like it it yeah. was like January 2021. Um and I, I can't remember when, and we've had meetings from time to time with a lot of radio silence in between as they work things out and trying to figure stuff out. But one, one of the closer meetings, I think it was earlier this year, they talked about, hey, you'll manufacture in your house, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, should we have factories and should the factories have, um, you know, give you some sort of bonus or some manufacturing bonus instead of doing it in your house? You know, you got the mom and pop shop doing building something in the house, but then you get a small factory and now your production speeds up or the cost of spark speeds up. And that was something the team took and, and worked on and, and fed back. And that's how the factories came back was feedback from the beta deck or business. Uh, one of the meetings that was presented out there. Uh, and a lot of us, as Thank Me Later said, have big properties. Even early on, that was always uh, there. There was a handful of uplanders searching for the biggest properties to mint. And uh, when they're released, you know, there were some released, and everybody raced for them. Um, so it, it's that's how we got to properties. And you're going to have the bigger properties 
are usually going to be people that already have spare OPEX available because as we see the markets right now, both the stock market, the crypto market, and then just overall inflation in a lot of countries, a lot of people don't have the extra cash to just start fiating in and buying these larger properties. So if these larger properties are bought, usually it might be with your uh, property earnings from people that are generating a good sum each and every month. Yeah, and I mean, I think we'll see as uh, factories and stuff. I mean, I think that that's going to be new players coming in too. If they want to be in manufacturing, we're going to see that continue, right? So, yes. So many other things you'll be able to do with your props that building a factory now doesn't make sense unless you're a shop owner. I guess. Build one of the new residential structures if you got the itch to build. Have you checked those out lately? Yeah, that's uh, where I built. Oh, I think I put uh, the new Lily Tower uh, on maybe one California. One of my financial district properties. Oh, um, nice. Yeah. So I put, I did build one of the Lily Towers. They're huge. They're really cool looking. Uh, I yeah. tried to build it in Alamo Square, but I think I'd have to put it on the school. And I have other plans for that. Yeah. Yeah. That school's a nice big property you snagged there. Um, I went other place. I, I didn't go there first when they let, released that property, and I hate myself for it. it. It would have been a race between me and you for that property, and then you're like, look what I got. I'm like, dang it. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, well, you know, so I won't, you know, I can't promise anything, but I don't know if you've seen my uh, Upex World uh, stuff. <laughs> so uh, the plan is potentially to use that um as uh, like an embassy of, of kinds uh, for san francisco potentially nothing finalized but uh when and if upex world has an embassy in san francisco i think that might be a location for it so there you go and that lily corp tower is, that lily corp tower is pretty sweet but it costs ten thousand three hundred spark hours to build the thing that I found interesting though is it's only expected living units at 10 and an apartment building is almost half the spark hours and you can house eight people yeah but it's the luxury man it's just like it's just, that's like saying the luxury home costs more than a townhouse but they both have one right all right fair enough uh, uh, yeah fair enough so what's the current what's the like current that. spark rate um i haven't checked but i know it was spiking up because i definitely went in and you know the it was right around 24 or so uh, per spark hour and I, I know some people that were wanting to get their factories fully sparked i put mine up for uh 29 uh spark hours so it, you're seeing a little raise in the floor but still it's not like the 50 50 60 it was when the exchanges first came out yeah that's her. 2025, Jimmy Je Jimmy James, this is 2025. Okay. And quality of life update. Did you see that? I did. I didn't know. Like, it's really funny because uh, I was like, I saw the thing about we're not doing Mapbox and I almost lost my mind. I was like, tell me all the markers are gone. <laughs> tell me all the markers are gone. <laughs> that would be hilarious. Um that, that's the first thing he thought of was the third party markers because of Matt. Oh, Box. yeah. I was like, oh, please tell me that the third party markers are gone. Oh, I want to be here for that. Um, <laughs> but no, it's interesting. And it's a shame because when I got to go in and check, there was a bunch of us who bought. And I mean, this is probably the same thing as the as the markers, uh, obviously, is like you could type in certain phrases. We were doing that in San Francisco. Uh, a lot in the early days is like you would type in a word uh, like a lot of the car dealerships would take you to a car dealership or like uh turtle or llama. And uh, yeah. So yeah. wait, Oh, friend that says there's more markers and they moved. So wait, are the markers now Google markers and not Mapbox? Like is Mapbox not a part of this at all? <laughs> oh, that's funny. Cause that means that one guy who was selling it for Mapbox, like I guarantee that uh, Google is not as easy to please. Padify made a good move taking Vegas property. That is Sam. 
No, that was from last week's. Uh, would you accept that offer? Ah. Uh. Yeah. Now, have you tried the new search yet? I'm tr- I'm literally trying it right now. Uh, oh, that's weird. It's like using my location. Like. Oh really? Yeah, that's weird. Huh. But I, I, hopefully, because it it was very hard to find properties in Los Angeles. A lot of people know that it was just very frustrating. So I'm glad that they've improved this. Um, but it's weird. Okay, so does your search do it based on, like I start typing an address and it's showing me addresses around where I'm actually at. Oh, like, really? That's not helpful. Yeah, like it's showing me Dallas addresses. Yeah. Oh. Well, they said so they like, do have the where I want. Yep. I start typing in and it's so now you got to get all the way to the city because it's it's giving you stuff that's by your physical location. And then if you're using a VPN, I'd be interested to see people using a VPN. Does that put you across the wherever you're, you're setting oh, up here? That's silly. You need to type the state more often. Like what? So now, like, I can't even, like, zoom over an area and, like, search for something. Like, that was such a cool feature. What are you doing, Upland? That's not a quality. You just decrease the quality of life. No, if you're over an area, you're fine. No. Like, how zoomed in do you have to be? No, I was over Manhattan, and it was, I was to the street level looking at one of my properties, and it gave me um, areas around me. So, and I was on a desktop. I don't know about my mobile app. Uh, Well, I'm on the iOS mobile app. Um, Okay. Yeah. So if I'm like, okay, right above Jersey street, I'm not going to show my screen because also this is like a security thing of like, if I'm showing my screen now, it's going to show like where I'm at. Yeah. So you have to do all your searches ahead of time or you have a copy and paste ready to go. I guess 49 Jersey Street. Oh my gosh, this is terrible. <laughs> I'm sorry, Upland. This is whoever quality check this for you. No bueno. Like, yeah, okay. So in order to get, I'm I'm literally on top of uh, 49 Jersey Street in San Francisco. Like normally if I was there, if I typed in 49J, it would probably pull it up. Um, I typed in 49 Jersey and it like had New Jersey stuff. It had all kinds of other stuff. And then, yeah, I started typing San Francisco. I started, I typed in San and it quickly did come up. Um, but man, it was, yeah. I mean, I do like the the color coding. It's very obvious the light versus the dark on which is available. Um it works perfect if you copy and paste from third-party developer sites. Nice. Well, there you go. Uh, I had an address in check while I was on VPN. There you go. Yeah. Nice. So. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. There's some tweaks uh, to be I'll done. Sorry. Yeah. There's. It's interesting. Uh, I like the the interface. It seems responsive. Um, I imagine this will also let you do some more interesting things with treasure hunts. Or the uh, the scavenger hunts, I guess. Uh, but as far as usability, um, I don't know. Um, hmm. Okay, I'll be interested to know what the rest of the community thinks. Let us know what yeah. you think of the new search feature. Did you lose any icons in the switch? Ooh, yeah, let us know in the comments if you lost uh, any of your third-party markers that you're happy to have, gas stations, hotels, whatever the case may be, things that things you were so- excited about. <laughs> tell us tell us the things you were excited about that your hopes and dreams got crushed. Yes. Were your hopes and dreams crushed by Upland? Come, share your story. Yeah. Although, you know what's looking good? If you do screen share... Bones Balboa. Have you seen him? Have you seen him recently? I have not seen him recently. 
Oh, hold on. Let me see here. Uh, da, da, da. Uh, all right. What else we got? I'm going to pull this up, but what else you got? Um, uh, That's all I really have for this week. Uh, There's still NFL legits available. Did you buy any of those? Um, The first ones I did, but this time around I did not because I still have you know, some things that I'm trying to do in Upland. So I didn't go after them. And I mean, I still think they're a good deal. If I had the extra UPEX to do it, I would go after them. Um, it is kind of weird because I got a long snapper in, in the first release. And I was like, how are you giving this guy fire stats? Because he's a long snapper. And it was the yeah. most... It, it was the strangest thing. And then I had an offensive lineman and the guy gave up a sack and he still had a fire stat. I'm like, no, if you give up zero sacks, then that should be a fire stack. Not a, uh, not a, you gave one. Yeah. Imagine you're treasure hunting and, and you stumble upon that. She, <laughs> man, you, you've put the time in nice. Yeah, so so Bones Balboa uh, phase one pre sales are more or less done. I think I might have a couple of the skull sides left, uh, the teeth, nose, eyes um, sold out pretty quick. Phase two, which is going to be the cheeks, the headband. So the headband is turquoise and gold. Uh, these are eyebrows, which are, are full townhouses. Um, those are, are dark black. They're pretty cool. Uh, on the cheeks, we actually have uh, these four. So the two under there are red. So it's like war paint, like blood war paint, and then uh, gray for the skull. He's got the two-tone nose going. He's got his fun teeth. I actually upgraded two of the uh, small town houses to these to the country homes, like, like weird molars. <gasps> Did I forget to build a house right here? Is he missing a tooth? He's missing oh, no. a tooth. Yep. Do I have like different? No, these are all the same. Oh, it drives me nuts. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So this is, uh, you know, work so in progress. That, what's that property for sale right there on the side going this one? for? Nope. Up to the, up to your right. Up 158. Right. Smart person. This one? Hey, yep. This little guy right here. $500. Oh, nice. I already increased in the secondary market value. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, like, if we come over here, I think this is, is this bidding? Who is this? Did you Luke? get any? Oh, yeah. Did you get any? Uh, did you buy any uh, NFL PAs on this drop? No. No, I'm not. I'm. I, I was only, but to be fair, I was only ever going to buy um, se season one, right? Like I was only ever going to buy 2020 legits. So since once again, you're, we, we've already talked about this. You're a Genesis type yeah. person, want the originals, all that stuff. Now, do you feel 2021, once they launched in week 13, were definitely overpriced. Uh, they did a price correction. And on these drops, they've done some of the price correction there. You're getting guaranteed fire stack cards. Do you feel that the price correction now for the 2021s devalues the 2020 legits? No, I don't. If anything, it just sets the floor higher. I think your your percent markup, your ROI might is obviously going to suffer because your 2020 floor is still going to be significantly higher but then that's because the base price was higher so then your roi for 2021 is going to be larger because you'll be or 2022 i guess whenever they do cheaper so yeah yeah so so you think the the price correction on weeks one through 13 2021 legits has no impact on the resale value of the 2020 legits No, I mean, I, I know, well, t I trust TM in this space. And if TM is saying, yes, it's a no-brainer, um, 
but I don't, I don't know. I ROI will be less for 20. Yes. The ROI for sure. I think ROI wise, because again, 2020 is going to set a, a pretty high minimum. So that means all of the years that are cheaper after it will inherently get a larger buffer. But I don't think that this being cheaper is necessarily going to drag down the value of 2020, um, but it might slow the progress for sure. Um, but I don't see 2020 taking a hit as far as like lowering its value. So, so I'd like to see. I'd like to hear Dizzy's take as he's chewing on an apple backstage. Um, you, you can even just type it in the comments, Dizzy. But what's what's your thoughts of? Did, did the change in price of the 2021s devalue the resale price of the 2020s from somebody that's been in the sports card industry for 30 years? <laughs> You've given up on the jits. Okay. <laughs> that's all right. Well, there you go. Fair enough. Um, I don't know. I, I think, We'll have to see. We have to see what they're able to do with the secondary, um, with the third party market. We'll see if they can't pull out something. We're seeing other projects in the space now. Um, so I don't know. And that's the, that's the other thing. One, we don't have, you know, the, the majority of the 200,000 people playing aren't sports card collectors, sports enthusiasts. So you don't have the secondary market demand there right now. And then you don't have the functionality either. So we don't know what, what Upland's extra utility is. You know, they've talked about being able to combine cards to make mementos. They've talked about having players being able to autograph them, so on and so forth. So we'll see. Oh, how about this? Anybody want to auction this tooth off and I'll let you design it? Ooh. So the teeth were going for, what was my retail on the teeth? I think it was 85,000. So I'll start the bidding at a thousand, a uh, hundred thousand outbacks and you can pick if you want it straight, if you want it crooked, if you want it a different color, I would even, why is that red? Oh, that's weird. Um, yeah. if, you, if you want it off center, uh, and, or if you wanted even the, the other small townhouse, the other small townhouse didn't have a yellow color, so that's why I didn't pick it. Let's see here. Do, 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 do. All right. Anybody want to bid on this? Oh, you want to do it live? Oh yeah, we're do it right now. Why not? All right, fifty k first offer. Minimum's a hundred k. Get <laughs> out of here. Four doll hairs. You guys are thanks, Franklin. Fine, whatever. It's going into the pool. You guys are the worst. <laughs> you, the See, you could add a red and yellow tooth. It could have been an abscessed black tooth. You could add the only black tooth in this skull. You could have had a silver tooth. Oh, like, oh, the one silver tooth. Ooh. Yeah, well, no reward without risk. So there you go. Ooh, now you got tree fitty. Screw you guys. <laughs> you Try to do something fun for you guys. Nope. Yeah. All right. So you got anything else before we get out of here this week? Uh, no. No. Uh, oh, wait. Yes. Yes. Upix World. Okay. What's up with Upix World? So Upix World is coming in a, a big way. It's not like anything you've ever seen before. Is it going to have data? Yes, but it is not. Uh, it's not an Upland data site. It is a layer two. Um, it's a layer two gaming and utility platform uh, that will be extending functionality of Upland. Um, it will have its own uh, gaming uh, background, lore, characters. Um, it's an absolute massive production. 
Uh, we are looking to democratize a lot of the uh, revenue streams from traditional gaming markets into uh, mass markets for uh, the artists out there, for the marketers out there, for the uh, vendors and sellers out there. Uh, it's going to be quite spectacular. So check out upx.world. Join the Discord. We are still actively boarding uh, for the Genesis mission. Um, wow, Franklin, get out of here. So the difference is, first of all, we are never going to ask for any money unless you're already playing and enjoying it. Like this is not ever, you're never going to see a, a situation um, where we're like, oh, buy all this and then gamification will come later. We're going to give you gamification. We're going to give you utility. We're going to give you fun. And then we're going to say, oh, by the way, if you want to enhance this, if you want to own part of that, um, then let's talk about how you earn um, and play to earn owning the layer one assets uh, that are driving value and creating revenue streams uh, for the players. So trust me, it is uh, very exciting. Obviously, I'm going to say that as uh, I'm, I'm helping lead the project. Uh, but yeah, if you're not uh, already subscribed to Upex World Media um, on Twitch, Twitter, everything, definitely check that out. We'll be doing live streams and join the Discord, um, which can be found when you go to upex.world or it's like uh, slash uh, Upex World. Uh, we have a couple bounties that are out right now. Oh, oh can I share that? Oh, anyway, we have a bounty board um, where we pay out uh, cash, Upex and other perks. So if you are an artist or developer of any kind or no artists and developers, send them our way. Uh, we are actively paying out contracts uh, for different pieces needed for uh, the game, uh, the gamification side. So yeah, it is crazy fun. Um, and I, I think everyone's really gonna like it once they start to see some results. And that's the biggest thing, right? We're not, we're not one of these projects that's like, hey, buy a bunch of randomly digitally generated nonsense and we're going to have some, you know, fake tokenomics and no, 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 that's not, that's not like it at all. We're going to be building a game first and then linking it to layer one to show value and then creating revenue stream opportunities for the players. So um, anyway, join the Discord to learn more. Super, super exciting project. Outstanding. Yeah. And then make sure you are subscribing to the channel. Uh, hit that bell to notify when we do go live or any of our spontaneous live streams that we do. Follow us on Twitter and everybody be safe and we'll see you out there in the metaverse. Oh, wait, I forgot. Ha <laughs> ha. Nobody's listening by now because they, they all they all tuned out. <laughs> they all tuned out. I mean, I did for sure. A what? Absolutely. Absolutely. But uh, we do have uh, um, TJ Miami boy coming on next week. They're doing some cool things in Upland and they got a nice little hip hop community going on. Pretty awesome. Uh, ran into them in Vegas. Oh, you know, are those so. the boys from Vegas? Yeah. Oh, dude, that's going to be a fun episode. I know yes. I don't even, I normally don't even say that, you know, I'm very particular about that, but I can tell you now already those guys, that's going to be a fun episode. Yeah, so we'll have them on next week. You'll definitely want to tune in next week. And now, uh, everybody have fun, be safe, and we'll see you in the metaverse. It's the Opix Podcast, baby. Glad you tuned in. Got your host, thank me later, and you're stupid to win. Might become an obsession as soon as you begin. Start out king of the street, then lock it iconic in. Welcome to Offland. Grab your Opix, man. On your way in the door, hit you with four grand. Get to buying and gripping, then to selling and flipping. Over to moving and shocking, I'm Scrooge McDuckin' in Opix.